Atma Shri Sudha Murthy. She was born in 1950 in North Karnataka. She completed her engineering from BVB College of Engineering, obtained first rank across all branches. She did her ME from Indian Institute of Science with distinction. She became the first women engineer selected in Telco. Today, she is the chairperson of Infosys Foundation. A prolific writer in English and Kannada, her books have been translated into all major Indian languages. She was awarded the Padma Shri in 2006. She is best known for her philanthropic work. Yes. The one and only Padma Shri Dr. Sudha Murthy. We have got an opportunity to talk to Mrs. Murthy on 10th November 2020. Let's watch the interview with Mrs. Murthy. A very good morning Sudha ma'am we are the students and teachers of government model higher secondary school perindalmanna in the district of malappuram ah. from kerala ah. um we are so excited and blessed to have a talk with you um <laughs> being, <laughs> being one of the first um uh, women engineers in india uh, founder oh, yeah. of infosys a prolific ah. writer teacher and ah. um it's very uh, we feel so lucky to have you it's a privilege uh-huh. to have you um thank you thank you for considering us in your busy schedule a warm welcome to you ma'am first of all let me say good morning to teachers and students this is the first time i have taken a high school student conversation so you know i will try my level best to make it simple so that you can understand second thing is uh, i have a special affinity for uh, uh kerala you're which part of kerala malabar area yes yeah. ma'am yeah my daughter in law is from kerala and her family comes <laughs> okay. from malabar <laughs> but now they have settled in kochi okay so i always love students you know my mother was a school teacher my father was a college professor and a doctor my sister was a professor and a doctor my brother is a professor at a U- caltech in usa my father in law was a school teacher my grandfather was a school teacher my sister in law is a school teacher so i come from a teacher's family so uh, naturally when a teacher asks something i will i will it's hard for me to say no okay if somebody asks me i can always say no so i told uh, leena my secretary that i'll find out some lot and i'll call you uh, leena must have sent you some books i suppose right yes, okay. we are very thankful for the books Books, okay. but we haven't uh, been able to me. read them huh. because no, of the me. pandemic we haven't been able to go to school uh-huh. fine, uh fine fine but we we'll, yeah but we'll read them for sure once the school reopens so okay. thank you so much that's okay after uh, i'm sending books to you many people wrote to many schools to contact and i said in case any school wants to read then i'm happy to give it doesn't matter money portion but children should read that's all i have Okay, चलिए okay. ask questions now. Okay, ma'am, uh, you said that your grandparents and your childhood has influenced your character a lot. So, could you share something from your childhood? Yeah, you know, I I grew up in a village, and uh, it was almost seventy years back. Okay, and in our village there was no electricity, and there was water was there, but no electricity. So we did not have uh, cinema or TV. Uh, what you talk none of them in our village nobody had a car nobody had telephone also okay all postcard writing uh, you know my grandfather was a school retired school teacher of sanskrit history uh, and mathematics <coughs> a rare combination of subject so uh, when i grew up with them i learned a lot because uh, teachers are normally very uh, very nice minded people and not politically minded people or money minded people so my grandfather used to sit on the veranda of the house and in the village when people used to pass him they said namaste master ji and go one day i, I don't know lakshmi what is your age 
I am 17. You are 17. Okay. When I was seven years old, I asked my grandfather, why you in the village head man comes, you in the village chief comes, he said, Namaste Master Ji, and he goes, what is great about teachers? You tell me. He told me in Sanskrit, which I will tell you in Sanskrit as well as, you know, my grandfather's subject was Sanskrit also. So we all learned to speak Sanskrit in a very young age. And it helped me a lot later part of my life to learn Northern Indian language. So he said, there is a shloka in Mahabharata. Uh, it said, Arjuna, somebody asked Arjuna, a mighty warrior, uh, why you sit below the feet of your teacher, Drona, and you are so rich, you are so handsome, and you are a king. But why do you respect so much your teacher? Arjuna says, in this life, in this life, whatever you have, over a time, you lose. For example, you are very beautiful today. But when you grow old, you look like me now. Okay? <laughs> when you have money, over a period of time, you may lose. If you have land, that land may be in floods, you may lose. But one thing which you don't lose, which cannot be burnt, which cannot be purchased, which cannot be uh, sold, is knowledge. If you have knowledge, nobody can steal it. And no date will perish. And the more you learn, the more you can give. And when you give, you understand it much better. And teacher is the one who goes on giving knowledge every year to every student. The more the teacher gives, the teacher becomes richer because as a teacher, I know this year I teach you. Next year, I'm better teacher of the same subject. So teacher is well respected because he or she is the one who changes your life. This is what he told me. And we did not have any electricity, etc. So mm -hmm. I used to read a lot. And that is the habit I continued even today. This is how I grew up in a village. And actually, I feel I'm very happy I grew up in a village where there was no fierce competition, good weather, no congestion, sharing with everybody. We did not have much money. But you know, we used to get rice and we used to share. Everybody will give rice. We'll grow coconut. We'll give it to somebody. You know, whatever we have, we'll keep it. I know everybody, whatever sweet we prepare, we'll distribute it. We had extremely good communal harmony and distribution, and we learned sharing is key. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. We have read that you came from a very ordinary family. How did class you, family. Yeah. How did your upbringing help you to become who you are today? Actually, it made me what I am today because money has not affected me. When people become rich, from middle class family to rich, then they have so much money, then they think they can buy everything with money. And some of the things you can buy with money, good clothes, jewelry, big house, but there are many things you cannot buy with money, happiness, you know, happiness, good health, you can't buy it. And in, in a middle class family, because I grew up, I learned the simple way of living. And irrespective of my wealth, I always lived very simple and became very easy for me. Whatever money I had, it always I felt in excess. And that I gave it to people in a different form. Building a school, building toilets, making 60,000 libraries we have made. 60,000 libraries, 14,000 toilets we have built, 3,000 houses we have done. We have spent more than 1,200 crore rupees on philanthropy in 25 years. So because I don't have expensive habits, I don't require much money to live in life. So my background helped me a lot in real life to be honest, to be simple, and to share whatever wealth I have with people. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Next. Okay, ma'am. We studied your anecdote, Horigalu. And our school resources had made a um, mission Drama. adaptation. Yes. Um, you mentioned your grandfather and one of your colleague Ratna in that. So my question is, how important, how crucial is to have a horigalu in our modern time, modern okay. life? Yeah, it is possible. Horigalu. Kallu means in Canada, a stone. I don't know what you call it in the, uh, Malayalam. What do you it call for a stone? Kallu. 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 Horegalu uh, means it will be like this kind. I will show you how exactly the horegalu in real life. These are the two uh, stones. On that another stone is kept like this. Okay. So whenever uh, a person carries a hay on the head, 
puts it on the horegallo, sits there for 10 minutes, drinks water and takes it again like this and go away. Horegallo. That means taking care of or reducing the hore, that means the um, reducing the difficulties or the uh, extra burden of a person for some time is hore gallo. In real life, everybody has a lot of problem. There is no house without a problem. There is no person without a problem. The problems, your problems look silly to me. Okay, my problems look Silly to you. They say, what Mrs. Murthy at this old age, what problem she has? No problem at all. She has money. She can have fun. Look at us. We have to study, earn money, a lot of work. For me, so what? I have money. You are young. You can dream a lot. You can run a lot. I can't run. You know, everybody looks, other difficulties are small. But everybody has difficulties. And it, we cannot take your difficulties. You know, your difficulties I can't take. I, my difficulties you can't take. Like a horegallu, when I, whenever you're in difficulty, you come and talk to me. I said, don't worry, beta. This happens in life. Please take courage, have hope. For example, I will tell you. Somebody fails in the exam and that fellow is dumb. She comes and tells me I failed in the exam. You can make two, three reactions. One is, good, you failed because on that day you did not give me something. Good, you failed because you did not study. Or you can say, look, Maybe you have studied this time, it was not possible to pass in the exam. Don't worry. Sit and study again. It will help you. Failures are the pillars of success. And every failure you must learn. You should not make the same mistake. So you tell some kind words. It is as good as horegallu. Somebody is in difficulty. Please don't increase their difficulty. Reduce their difficulty in horegallu. Uh, so you just said that uh, you just said how you approach uh, people who comes to you with their problems. Yeah. So I have a question that uh, when you have problems, who do you go to? Who do you see as your horror? Yeah. Whenever I have difficulties, you know, if I tell my difficulties to others, they don't even understand. Because people think once you have money, you know, people think you can solve all the difficulties. What is their problem for Sudha? They will say. My difficulties are different types. So whenever I have difficulties, you know, for 10 minutes, I sit down. I will sit down for 10 minutes. Breathe well. Then I said, what are my difficulties? I, with a cool mind, I discuss about my own difficulties with myself. Okay, why, why I'm upset? What are the difficulties? Is there any solution? So I'll take some time and try to answer my difficulties myself. And then I'll say, so what? I lost the battle, but I'll win the war and I'll go. Okay, so I'll get up. That's quite inspiring, ma'am, how you overcome your difficulties. But you know, no, over a period of time, I learned that. Because if you tell your difficulties to others, people, some of them may help. Some some people should understand your difficulties. Suppose you are, I'm a student. Then I can tell my other student, look, the subject is tough. But in my time, I don't have any colleague. People at the top are always lonely. Please remember, I don't have colleagues with whom I can tell anything. Okay? Oh, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, we are all fascinated when we hear about the way you uh, Infosys was found. Uh, uh, the small principal amount of money that you invested have now grown to a multinational cooperation. Can you tell us about your journey with Infosys? Yeah, when we started, we never thought of money. When you do any adventure, assuming that you will get a lot of money, actually it's a failure. You should always assume that I will do a better job. Money comes behind you. Initial 10 years, it was very hard. There was no money. And uh, uh, we lived in a rented house. Making both ends meet was difficult. But once, but our quality of work was always good. So slowly the clients started coming. It took 10, 15 years for us to get good clients. And then we did well. But in any entrepreneurship, it's important to have hope. Live simple way. Don't aspire that I'll make a lot of money. Aspire I'll make a good quality of work. And that really landed up in you know, whatever position I am today. Okay, next. Okay, ma'am. We know that you are the chairperson of Infosys Foundation. You are a great orator, writer. You are a homemaker also. So mm -hmm. which role makes you more happy? Happy? Everybody asks me that one. Whatever I get, I try to excel in that. Even I'm at home, I work very hard. 
when I'm in my college, when I used to teach, I teach. I used to teach very well. Actually, I got the best teacher award because my students are very friendly with me, and I teach very well. Nobody would fail in my subject. Then, when I was, uh, I would do social work. I go to the village. I go to the uh, tribal area. I go to the mountains. I go to the valley. Everywhere I work. Go to the border area. Everywhere I work. So when I write, I completely I give myself, and I then I write. So I have this principle and which I have developed. Whatever I get in life, I will excel in that. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So uh, I have noticed in your books uh, that you are very observant from a very young age, and yeah. I also wonder why you chose writing anecdotes over fiction. First, I started with fiction, then ch oh. changed to real uh, non-fiction. My first seven books were fiction. For example, uh, what is this? Uh, gently falls bakula uh, house of cards uh, mahashweta uh, then what is this uh, mahashweta bakula dollar dollar daughter in law dollar bahu all are fictional and later i realized how, about, uh, how i taught my grandmother how to read. it is not fictional it is a non fiction it is a real then then i started writing real because i felt real is much more fascinating than fiction fiction you can imagine of your level but real life is a god's reality it is a god's fiction our life is a god's fiction so it is much more realistic i felt much more interesting i felt okay yeah. ma'am the yeah. forces foundation has handled 16 national disasters so far now huh. we are hit with a pandemic hey. how do you handle this situation this is entirely different than normal Uh, situation because here we have to work very hard without going out. So we we spent 150 crore rupees buying medicines, 24 lakhs PPE kits, 22 lakhs masks, then ventilators, built a hospital, many things we did. There are one lakh dry ration kits, etc. We worked very hard and still working hard. Okay. Uh, you are a role model to many of us who are interested in social work. So I would like to know um, how you came to this field. What was your inspiration? You read a book which I in your library. Uh, in how I taught my grandmother. In that there is a chapter. Amma, what is your duty? My daughter asked me, Amma, what is your duty? And that time I realized I should, I should take up social work. Okay. Okay, ma'am. People have different approach to money. How do you value money? It is very essential uh, to have basic things. Without money, it is not possible to have a house, medicine, education. All those things you require. But once you meet your requirement, then excess money actually spoils you. You get into bad habits unless your mind is very cool and controlled. Okay. So excess money, what you have, you should go back to society to help us. That's the way I look at money. But I don't say money is not important. Money is important. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, you are always juggling with a lot of roles successfully. How do you manage your time? Because I don't want to waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hardly go to any wedding. I never get into any controversy. Talking this is right, that is right. you know they are all subjective then i do not attend lot of social functions i consider it's a waste of time hazar people will wedding tell me why so many people should go so many people just go sit there chat whole day they spend i don't do any one of them i always calculate my time i write my diary every day what i should do i get up in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning i sleep around 9:30 10 not a minute i waste continuously i will be working and that is a shortcut to success yeah we can uh, see that energy in you we can witness it here um ma'am you're a very experienced person life might have taught you a lot of lessons so how do you define life it is a very philosophical question life is a journey and there are many things which you cannot control some things you can control which you can control you excel which you cannot control except that's what is life 
But you know, I passed this life only once. If I can show compassion, love, affection, sharing with others, let me do it now. You know, I believe in this, that in, in one's life, we should be kind to others. We should be affectionate to others. We should understand other person's difficulties. We should never say always, I'm right, I'm right. That is not correct. People, many, it's, you are one way of looking at it, I can tell you. Man, our school, Government Model Higher Secondary School, Peridal Manda, has been one of the biggest schools in Kerala. Recently, mm -hmm. it became completely digitalized. Mm -hmm. Many renowned people like EMS Nambudiripad has, has studied in our school. Moreover, we are preparing this interview as a documentary, not only for our school, but also for every student in Kerala. So can you give a message to all the students in our school, but also in the, every student in Kerala? I said, Kerala people are extremely hardworking, I have seen. Okay. And loyal. Loyal. That's something you can see. Whole Dubai, if you, do, if you do not know English, it's fine, but you should know Malayalam in Dubai. Okay. <laughs> But what is important is in life, you should have keep an aim who should be legally, ethically right. Legally, ethically right aim, you should keep it. Work towards that. Don't work for money. Money will follow you if you are very good. If you are a great worker, people will come and follow you and say, oh, I want this fellow. I want Rahul Babu. He's a very good worker. He's very honest. He's very loyal. So people will come after you and quote the salary what you want plus something they add. Okay. But you say, unless you give me 10,000 or 20,000, I can't come. And your quality of work is not good. Then nobody will fetch you. Please remember, uh, a good skill is more important than money. Because if you have skill, people will follow you and you get more money. Be honest and ethical in your work. Boss is there. Boss says, come at 8 o'clock. Okay. And 8 to 5, you work. Boss has on leave. Go at 10 o'clock. Don't do that. Your ethics should say, look, I get this kind of money. I should work for it. Whether there is a boss or there is no boss, it doesn't matter because inside me should say, you have taken money and you should be ethical to your work. Be honest. Be ethical. Okay? Work hard. There is no shortcut to success other than working hard. And then have good habits. I'll give you an example. To have a bad habit, it takes no time. To have a good habit, it takes years together. But it takes very little time to leave it. It takes more time, bad habit, to leave it. Like if a potter makes a nice pot, he takes a week. He takes a week. And if you take a stick, it takes 10 seconds to break it. So is life. In life, develop good habits. It takes time to develop good habits. But it takes 10 seconds to destroy it. Like drinking, smoking, it takes no time. So please have good habits. Be ethical and honest. And then success will follow you. Be compassionate to others. Be nice to others. As much as possible, please help. You never know what situation will be. You never know. So today you may say, oh, that fellow doesn't have money. You never know in life. You may not have money at all. So be compassionate to others. That's what I want to tell all students. You, Work hard. Be compassionate. Do a, a lead a ethical and ethical and moralistic life. Prob nice, probable life. Thank Good you. life. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to extend my gratitude on behalf of my students and also the teaching community of Kerala. Thank you. And, thank you. Uh, and I would like to ask you a very small question. Do Since uh, the capitalism, uh, the capitalism is having a regressive effect on your society, on our society. You and your foundation is doing a lot of things to perpetuate goodwill. Is that the policy of Infosys Foundation or is that something that you yourself want to perpetuate? Uh, when Narayan Murthy was there, that time Infosys Foundation has started and we had this theme that we must give back to the society and it has continued. And basically both of us come from a teacher's family. So we are not used to a lot of money also. Actually, a lot of money we can't handle also. We decided that it should go back to the society because capitalism makes you to work hard 
to bring the best merit but you should be compassionate capitalist you should be yes. compassionate capitalist so that the society will come up that we made it a point we should have compassion along with capitalism so that we can help others without capitalism we don't get money if you don't get money then we can't help people suppose you become extremely capitalist then everything is plus and minus you know loss and profit you think then you will never value a person right like mother's love yes, it is not like a profit or loss it is a mother's love a teacher's yes. teaching it is not profit or loss you know it's a great affection because i am a teacher i'm sure all teachers will feel every student is like her own child or his own child we teach with compassion same way compassion capitalism is the best way to live i feel thank Proceed you ma'am yes uh, we are really blessed to have you ma'am thank you ma i want to ask you one question you were the one and only student of 150 students engineering batch and you have been fighting against gender discrimination from a very young stage and still in this 21st century we are experiencing gender discrimination what can we do about it see definitely the gender discrimination is there for a long time see when i decided uh, to do engineering it was like uh, there's a bomb explosion in our family see my grandparents were teacher my grandmother the uh, grandfather the teacher he said so he said beta your history is very good in history he said your history is very good do you phd in history you will be contribute something to history my father was a doctor and a professor he said you should become a lady doctor you can help lot of people my mother was a school teacher in mathematics she told me you do msc in mathematics you can become college professor it is helpful for a lady after marriage she can look after house and children and you because you get leave then uh, uh, you know our community i come from a small community known as the brahmins you know vaishnava brahmins a small community in our community hardly boys have never boys study but never ever they have become an engineer in our family nobody was engineer most of the people were school teachers bank clerks postal clerks and not and some professors and one or two doctors and not more than that so they could not understand a girl going to engineering that is to sitting next to the boy how can it be possible so my grandmother said who will marry you you may do engineering but who will marry you she was worried my bua or atte atte is where there they told my father she is this girl does is gone mad crazy no brain you should not allow her to go to engineering college you know then she won't marry within the community she will marry from the other community so we are not coming for the marriage they told this more only in college professors were not keen to have me why have a girl there is no ladies toilet and girl is a no sense the moment a girl goes to a male dominating engineering college then they assume like a the movie i will fall in love with someone and run away or something that kind why have all those headache no girl should be there so everywhere there was a discouragement including my classmates felt why a girl should come and sit next to us girls are lower than boys your engineering is meant for uh, you know he man boys kind a girl cannot do carpentry smithy welding why have a girl but i told it's an application science i will do come what may be i will do i had very difficult time it is not that i had a smooth time there was no toilet for 4 years nobody built a toilet for me they felt the way anyway she will leave and go they, all they assumed that i will fail in the first year and i will leave the college i did not fail i got a first try okay <laughs> so i used to go home. my home was 3 km if i have to use the restroom then i have to go home and come back so i trained in such a way that i will not use a toilet and uh, up to 12 o'clock at 12 o'clock i will walk to home use a restroom and have lunch and then come back to college and then nobody will talk to me in the class because they felt it was unwelcome guest but when i got first rank they realized that i am better than them and i realized these boys are like that only we are better than them more than the boys should excuse me here all three of you so <laughs> i said we are much better than them you know it's all more of assumption then i do i did very good carpentry smithy welding survey then i said why people say engineering in the men's domain because no girl has gone and seen okay this is the way how then i made up my mind you know very strong mind i made up you read that 3000 stitches there i have written how to beat boys 
Okay, please read. You have to, I'm swimming against the current. It was not easy. But ultimately, when I go back to my college, now today, there are 40% of the total population of students, they are girls. And in instrumentation, there are 60% are girls, 40% are boys. So I tell girls, they are in minority, please look after them. Don't be harsh to them. You know, all those things I tell them. Today, the scenario has changed, but only with educated people in education, educated society, but not in reality, 100%. It is becoming better and better over a period of time. It is not a computer. You switch a button, the screen is on. It is not like that. Please remember, any social changes takes time. About 50 years back, what it is there, today it is not there. But to make equality, you should work very hard. You should work very hard. And never use your, your trump card, I'm a girl, I can't work. I never, used, when I was expecting my babies, I never told, I'm, you know, I'm an eight month pregnancy, I will work less. I said, no, I'll work. I'll work. Never use. Only when I'm all alone traveling at two o'clock in the night by airplane and coming back that time, I said, I'm a lady, I want, somebody should drop me home because of the security reasons. So if you want a gender bias, should go away. The key is you should get education. You should work. Show boys or men or others saying that we are educated and we are equal to you, you need work. Don't use your trump card. I'm a female, I want to go home early. My husband has come, I have to go early. You know, I have a small baby, I want to go home early. No, don't use such cards. Then your, your respect comes not by demand, by your own command. And that is possible. Vijayista. Madam, uh, you are an inspiration to the womanhood and uh, uh, you are also an inspiration for us uh, as Men. being an epitome <laughs> of simplicity and uh, uh, thank you for sparing your valuable time with us and we are so pleased to have you as our guest for here. Thank you. And thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks. Ma'am, we are really thankful to you for the great opportunity that you have extended to our students. Uh, there is no words to express our gratitude. Our students have got a oppor uh, golden opportunity to talk to you. And we will always cherish this memory in our minds. And uh, this interview is going to be released soon in our school. And I think it will make uh, uh, rounds in the entire state itself. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish kids, I wish you all the best. Maybe God... With you. And Rahul Babu, back to you. So, ma'am, now let's conclude this session. On behalf of Government Model High Secondary School, Pradaman, I would like to thank Ms. Sudhamuthi for giving us your precious time and sharing the experiences of your life and of the long journey with Infosys Foundation. I would like to thank our teachers, Prashant Sir, Bijis Sir, Pabidamis and Fasinamis for choosing us to be a part of this wonderful occasion. I would like to thank all others who worked behind this to make this occasion memorable. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rahul, but I want to tell you, high school teachers make your life what you are later to do. Please remember that. And when you pass out, when you become successful, come back to school, respect your teachers. I have, done, I have respected all my high school teachers, built a building in each one's name. Okay, whatever you can do, whatever you can do, respect them. Because in the hierarchy in our India, mother is the greatest. Then comes father, Pitru Devo Bhava. Then comes Acharya Devo Bhava. Acharya means not the pundit, but the teacher who, who makes your life, she or he is most important, third in the hierarchy. All of you come to school like a sugar cane, you know, difficult to eat. But when you go out, you are you come out as a sugar. That means a sugar cane become a cane sugar. And this entire factory of bringing the cane, taking the juice out of it, and that means giving you punishment at times. And then um, boiling it, put it in the pressure and the machine, and then you get a white, beautiful sugar is you. So your teachers spend so much time on you, and you have an obligation for teachers. It is not the kind of salary they get. You know, it is not equal to that what they teach. It's much more than that. I always tell what salary we get is compared to the concern what we show to our students, like our own children. 
you know when the results come i was i used to get more scared than my students they said ma'am you are taught well we all will pass i said no let me see how many first ranks have got how many of them got distinction how many get, is there anybody who has failed in which subject they have failed because every teacher considers her or his students should do better i'm sure pasina ma'am and umar ma'am and all and madhavan all will agree when our teach our students do very well we are extremely happy yes because as if we have passed as if we have passed and when you people get married we feel as if we are getting married kind of happiness so there's a saying in sanskrit it says somebody asked guru drona oh you are such a great warrior a great teacher tell me what 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 do you expect in life he said shishya di chet parajay as a teacher i expect my defeat should come to my own student that means my student should be much more successful than me if i have read 10 books my child that means my student should read 20 books he should be or she should be better than me and if there is any comparison between me and my student let my students be better than me and the defeat should come from my own student not from some other student because every teacher wants her student or his student should succeed in life whether when you become successful you won't give any money to teacher you give it to your parents okay but a teacher who doesn't get any remuneration when you become successful still respect wants your well wishing your well wisher is greatest person actually so all teacher should do namaskara and say we are proud to be your student i'll go back to my alma mater and do something to my school something to my teachers you should do that every teacher i have done because i felt it they changed my life yes ma'am thank you yeah. thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. okay madam prashant everyone bye have a nice day